Okay, folks, it's your buddy Mike Messier, Mike's Instant Movie Review. Just saw Bob Marley, One Love. And what did I think? Should you go see it? Should you go not? I say so. Go, go ahead and see it. If you're thinking of seeing it, it's not going to kill you to see it. The music, of course, is great. The gentleman who played Bob Marley thought... You see, I'm not a Bob Marley expert, okay? So I can't tell you if it was a great Bob Marley or not, but I mean, it was believable. I think the hardest thing, perhaps, uh, one of the things that's kind of hard for this movie to pull off, which I think they did pretty well, how do you do the uh, kind of the genuine, uh, thick Jamaican accent in English, but not isolate uh, the Americano audience like myself? Um, but I think they did a good job with that. Uh, I, I went into this movie not knowing a whole lot about Bob Marley. I knew, I thought I just knew three or four songs, Three Little Birds, No Woman, No Cry. Uh, if you push me, if I had a gun to my head, I'd probably come up with, um, you know, freedom for the people and so forth. But, um... I might not, to be honest. But as this movie uh, pr plays out and you hear most, uh, all of his big hits, really, um, Redemption Song, all these wonderful songs, Exodus, then he, I start to realize, wow, what a, what a wonderful catalog this guy had at the tender age of 36. Uh, now, here's the thing with this doc. I can't really tell you what I'm not seeing. I can't tell you what I'm not seeing in this doc because I don't know because I'm not a Bob Marley expert. I haven't sat there and, uh, you know, watched documentaries or read books about Bob Marley. I don't think I've even read his Wikipedia page, folks. So I'm not the one to ask, is this Bob Marley One Love movie uh, genuine? You know, people are getting all pissed and bent about the Iron Claw Von Eric movie. I'm trying to deal with those people trying to inform them that it's based on true events, not actual events, trying my best to help people understand how films work. It doesn't always happen. Uh, but with this, I'm of the mainstream fuck who doesn't know my Bob Marley from my elbow. Uh, so I'm wondering, are they telling me the full story? And part of my wonderment comes because good old Ziggy Marley who was one of Bob's children, uh, one of his sons, Bob Marley's uh, son, Ziggy, continued to play music, you know, and I believe, believe it or not, Ziggy Marley was one of uh, the very first, you know, real musicians I ever saw in concert. <clears throat> like a concert when I wasn't a little kid, like Ziggy Marley and whatever band he had, Ziggy Marley and the Ziggettes was like the biggest band that I can remember seeing initially, okay, live. <clears throat> Exciting, huh? Now I'm choking on the goddamn, they gave me free popcorn tonight. I'm going to have to sip a water now. They were giving out free popcorn. I'm telling you, this Regal Cinema in Austin, Texas, hell of a lot better than the Regal Cinemas in Jacksonville, Florida. No offense, Jacksonville. I do appreciate that it's open. But this thing has reclining seats. It has... A guy handed me popcorn when I come into the theater. The other day, there was a little person uh, checking my ticket. I found that exciting. I know I have a thing for that. Uh, so here we are again on my own, going down that fucking winding road. <sighs> no tonic attain on the fucking car, unfortunately. Although she'd probably be 85 years old now. So maybe that's fortunate. What else? Um... I like the movie. Like I said, there's. I'm sure that there's some Netflix fucking documentary or some Amazon Prime documentary or some other goddamn documentary floating around on whatever the fuck streaming or Hulu or YouTube or whatever the fuck. So maybe between all the things that I'm doing with my life, now I have to add find Bob Marley documentary and watch it and compare notes to this thing. But what I was saying was, because this film is produced by Ziggy Marley, Bob's son, you know that you're going to get a little bit of homogenization. You know what I mean? Whenever there's a family member that's in charge of telling the person's life story, they're going to soften the, the fucking bullets on the pillow. You know what I mean? Like, like for instance, 
and look, it was the times. It was the late seventies. Uh, Bob Marley and I. I don't know if they were officially married, but the mother of several of his children, Rita. Um, you know, they're both cheating around, and uh, they have a fight, a tiff about it. And uh, <clears throat> you know, the woman Rita slaps Bob across the face. Now, are we to believe that Bob just stood there and took the slap and just sat on the, the, the fucking hood of his car and thought about it for the rest of the night? Or did, you know, Bob get a little physical? I don't know. I wasn't there. But according to this movie, and I think Rita herself was also a producer, like I said, you know, it's one of those deals where if you have the family producing the movie, are they really going to give you warts and all of the human being? Or are they going to homogenize it and sanctify, sanctify, or sanctify, or sanctify? And I don't know, like I said, because I'm not a Bob Marley expert. I'm just, I've been through this circus before where I see some movie. People were saying that about fucking Napoleon. Like some critic said, I think it was actually my pal there. Maybe it was Andrew Buckner. Maybe it was somebody else or, or, or Cora Monley, one of my real life people that I kind of know and, and know on Facebook, but said something to the effect of Napoleon's a good movie. It seems like it was written by Napoleon, meaning, you know, they put Napoleon in this glowing light. And I think in this movie, you know, is, but what I did like about, and I'm probably going to give this four stars, three and a three quarters or four um, I did like about this movie, they kind of start, like, they, they start with a little bit of a foreshadowing, like some priest guy or something gives little Bob a copy of the Holy Bible. I didn't realize how big of the Bible guy Bob Marley was. I One riddle that I don't think was solved for me in this experience was... Please explain to me what what denotes or what is Rastafarian? Like what I get okay, you grow your hair out, you smoke some ganja. What else? I, I don't I didn't get it. I mean I heard in the movie Bob himself says something to the effect of, you know, we're Rastafarian man, we don't uh, deal with the politics. Okay, I like that. But um what do you do? You just grow your hair out and smoke. I mean, there had to be more. To, and start is it is the Bible a big thing for the Rastafarians? Is it grow your dreadlocks, smoke your ganja, and read your Bibles? I'm I'm not making fun. I just don't know what the fuck it is, and I don't think the movie really explained that. And maybe this is one of those deals where if you go into the movie totally ignorant of the subject matter, you you're not gonna feel fulfilled. And maybe that's my situation here. Because, like I said several times, I'm not a Bob Marley expert. But I know enough about this cruel world to tell you that there's more to this story than this story is telling me. <clears throat> there is some type of expose, some type of documentary, some type of audio book that I can appreciate out there. And if any of you fo find folks in YouTube world know exactly what I should be looking at, feel free to leave a comment. Now, if you're watching this on Twitter or Facebook or whatever the fuck, you actually have to click over to the goddamn YouTube channel, the main hub, and why don't you be a pal and subscribe to this channel instead of just telling me how great my movie reviews are. Actually subscribe, copy and paste the URL, tell your friends, tell your enemies. Um, anyway, I like Bob. What else can I say about this movie? There's some, like I said, there's illusions that Bob even had a, a fling with Miss World. I mean, that seemed to be an illusion. And there was a woman who was standing outside, I think, of a recording studio. Basically, the uh, it seemed like she was waiting to, you know, sexually pleasure Bob. And I don't know if that was the Miss World character or not. There was a flashback, you know, and some of these movies are kind of fun, like these, like go back to the late 70s or whatever, because they showed like a quick montage of like Bob hanging out with famous people. And there was a guy that was clearly supposed to be Mick Jagger. Uh, Bob and some of his close associates go after this situation in Jamaica where he gets shot. That was a strong beginning. Oh, spoilers, by the way. They all go over to uh, London and I believe they're seeing the Sex Pistols in concert, and uh, which would be uh, Sid Vicious and Johnny Rotten and all those guys. And um, a riot breaks out. And I guess I would have liked to have seen, 
you know, the Bob Marley character interact with Johnny Rodden. Like, I thought they were going to call him up on stage or some such thing, but they did not. Um, you know, the evil white man, uh, thankfully for us Americanos, is uh, shown as being British in London or UK. Please explain to me, fine folks, the difference once again. UK, Britain, and England. Somebody explained it to me once, and I, now I forgot. So I guess I have to be told again. A lot of things, I'm learning all the things I don't know tonight, okay? What is the difference between UK, Britain, and England? Someone explained it to me once before, and I was like, oh, cool, and now I forgot. Uh, so, what else? Um, you know, I did like the editing of this film, both the way the screenplay was written, uh, which helps, and also the way they did the final cut basically they kind of after the little four like we didn't have 20 minutes of like little bob or teenage bob right which i could see them doing that in this type of movie for instance the aretha franklin um biopic from a few years ago that i did think uh what's her name uh was going to get a, a nomination for best actress jennifer hudson wow my brain but she did not get a nomination hashtag whatever the fuck but uh in this they started off almost quite literally with a bang uh bob and his wife get shot i thought honestly I, i'm so ignorant of this true story i thought the wife might be dead she gets a shot in the head and she survives uh, one inch from her brain so uh, magically she survives getting shot in the fucking head and Bob gets shot, of course, kind of like every other superhero. He gets shot, like, in the arm and in the fucking side of the rib so he doesn't die. Uh, but these fine folks, Bob and Rita, like, basically went on this world tour. They got lead in their system. I mean, that's not good for you. Um, you know, later on, we see the guy that shot Bob. He apologizes. I mean, what a wonderful human being. Uh, so there was Bob, not the guy that shot him. So then they have this scene where, like, the opening movie, there's almost like this close-up of, of Bob Marley's character here. And the to me, the feeling was already we're making, you know, him the Christ of Rastafarian, him the Christ of Jamaica, the Christ of the late 70s, the Christ of music, uh, so on and so forth. Basically, Bob Marley... In shown in this film, just like they said, Jim Morrison, Val Kilmer, and The Doors was seen as a Christ figure. Christ dying for the sins of the rest of us. Thank you, Bob and Val Kilmer and Jim Morrison. Thanks for dying for our sins. Well, uh, since you're picking up the tab, we'll put more on the bill. So anyway, I thought the movie was good. Would I say it's like, oh my God, you have to go see this. Holy shit. No. But it's probably better than the John Belushi documentary, if you ever saw that one. It wasn't a documentary, it was a film 30-some-odd years ago that, that flopped like a, a man uh, in a fucking pancake batter swimming pool uh, jumping into it. So, I don't know. If you saw this movie, leave a comment or don't. It's your choice. Uh, freedom, freedom of choice. Leave a comment or don't. Won't you leave a comment? on my youtube channel <laughs> i might put a heart next to it or i won't but don't you use swearing language because then it will be restricted so anyway folks i will you know you always say you're gonna do a bunch of shit when you see a movie, like, oh, I'm going to go out and search for Bob Marley music, and I'm going to go buy Exodus, and I'm going to listen to it 30 times, and I'm going to go find the Bob Marley documentary series, okay, uh, by Ken Burns, and I'm going to do all this horse shit, and then you don't do it, so I'm not going to lie to you, I mean, I think I will think about doing this stuff, and I probably won't, but if any of you fine folks have a link or whatever the fuck, to a Bob Marley documentary. I would watch it. I mean, I may not watch it right now. I'm still in Austin, Texas. Um, I The goddamn driving around here is so intimidating. I don't know how you Austinites do it. I feel like I'm going to die every time I get in my goddamn vehicle. So hopefully I won't. I'm going to try to find this 24-hour coffee house next. MikeMessier.com. Subscribe and like everything I do. Buy my books.